Hola, buenos días, es Nico. So today, I wanted to try something new. <laughs> I mean, I talked about it on Patreon, but now I'm bringing it to my actual platform. Essentially, I talk about a lot of adult cinematography, which isn't necessarily bad, but I feel like there's only so many times I could tell y'all who my favorite porn star is. Um, only fans tea happens frequently and it's messy and all, but I like to cover things outside of that because I actually cover normal topics. So now I'm going to start incorporating black and brown LGBT media, um, such as movies, shows, music, just because I constantly search on YouTube for this kind of content and I rarely find it. Everybody's usually talking about pop culture. They're usually talking about only fans tea, big old tea, you know, that kind of thing. And I don't really want to pigeonhole myself into like a drama channel because when I originally created this channel, that's not what this is about. So I'm going to start hosting, not hosting, but like <laughs> having little videos um, called Nico's B&B &B Queer Movie Review or something like that. So, today we're going to be talking about something from one of the creators of Noah's Ark. Um, it's called The Skinny, and it stars Jesse Smollett. Um, I like to call him Juicy, just because in this movie he shows his booty. N yeah, yeah, what do you want me to say? Jesse Smollett has a nice ass. Anyway, <laughs> all, all legal drama aside, let's get on to the actual movie. And I'll start off with character descriptions, kind of like I did with Love, Victor. And then I'm going to give you a plot synopsis of the first 20 minutes, just so that I don't spoil everything and you can actually go and watch it. Because this is one of those movies that it's, it's good. <laughs> it's good, it's not great. So when it comes to black and brown queer cinema, I have a specific standard that I have to have met. You don't have to have a big budget, but you have to have good acting and decent writing. So this is one of those movies. The budget is there, it's not like stupendous, but it's there. The music is good, the acting is good, and the writing, cringy at times, but it's really good. So let's get into it because I've been ranting for like four minutes. <laughs> Essentially, Jesse's character is Magnus, who the story kind of revolves around because his friends are coming to see him for the first time since they graduated college in New York City for New York City Pride. And they are going to meet his new boyfriend, Ryan. So, <laughs> synopsis on Magnus. He's a hopeless romantic, a little naive, but he has his head on his shoulders. He's not stupid. Uh, character synopsis for Ryan. <laughs> he's the boyfriend, the hot one that they met online. I'm about to get into why he ain't shit. And th that's what I love about this movie because it has a lot of black and brown archetypes. He ain't shit. I'm going to get to it in, in, in a few seconds. I'm sorry. I'm rambling. So next character, Langston. She's the British bisexual that's too chicken shit to actually hit on women because she ain't got no game. Then there's Sebastian. Hopeless romantic. Hopeless romantic living in La La Land. He's a baby. He's a, he's a virginal baby. Um, he does not understand the differences between platonic gay friendships and romantic ones. And he has the hugest crush on Kyle. And I'm going to tell you why in a second that that's a terrible idea. Kyle is a whore. <laughs> that's, <laughs> I'm sorry. That's his, that's his entire persona. Like when we look into the other characters that get a little layer of depth, it's not like every character has a large amount of depth. Kyle just likes fucking. That's that's Kyle's entire thing. Yeah, he's a professional. Yeah, he has a good job, but he just likes to fuck. It's Kyle. That's a lot of gay people, if I'm being honest. Like, it's it's that's why I say it has a lot of archetypes because it breaks it down bit by bit and shows them interacting together. And it's really interesting because it's realistic. And then there's Joey, you know? The bougie, the bougie Sadiddy friend with the tramp stamp, you know, um, she's the mean friend, but she's the friend that really prioritizes her friends. As in, we all have that one person that's mean to everyone else, but will do anything for their friends. And that is who Joey is. And that's the thing, Joey peeped that Ryan wasn't shit to begin with. So now that I've gone through the entire cast, we're about to get into the actual story. So essentially, <laughs> so essentially, they all come to New York City Pride. They're all gonna go around and have fun. 
And as soon as everybody links up, you know, Magnus takes Ryan and his friends back to the apartment. He's like, oh, I just need a little time with Ryan. You know, I need to talk to him about something. And they go in the room. And first thing first, first thing first. Magnus. Say, got me, swallow me, drip down the side of me. Bitch pulled the cakes out. She was like, I want it. I want it now. And Ryan had to say, we agreed on a six month sex rule so that we can get to know each other more and it can be a more intimate experience and truly solidify our emotions together. And they're at month five out of the six months, wait. And you know what? As a teenager, when I watched this, I was like, that's so romantic. That's so, he's, he's waiting. He's waiting for him until it's time because the feelings will be there. And as an adult, I'm like, you've got Magnus throwing cake your way and you like pull your booty cheeks back in that underwear. That's me, but that's me as an adult because nowadays I've realized that no matter how long you wait to have sex with somebody, if it's not gonna happen, it's not gonna happen. Emotions wise, you know? So that's why I'm over the whole, I'm putting a, a time limit on when we can have sex, that kind of thing. So meanwhile, all the friends are listening because I don't know if this was a kink that Magnus had, but I don't know why you would try to get your booty ate when you just brought all of your messy friends up into the apartment. So afterwards, they did like five minutes of heavy petting and Joey texted him, hurry up, bitch, this is getting annoying. So he went out to lead Ryan outside. And Joey, being the nosy bitch that she is, was listening. She was listening, yes. So Ryan's talking about some, hey, can you let me hold some? You know, I just, they cut my hours at work and I'm a little behind. And man, is like, yeah, baby, of course, no problem. And... <laughs> And you know, Joey is listening to this. He like, some ain't right. And bitch, that's me. Cause I'm one of those people while I'm dating somebody, if they're on hard times financially, I will offer money. I will, if I have it. Because I'm usually one of those people like I save my money to the point that I don't go out and have fun and spend it. So I just accumulate money for a rainy day. So if somebody that I know and care for is having a rainy day situation, I will help out if I can. So I understood that, but at the same time, Y'all been dating for five months. He just told you you can't get no dick and now you're giving him money. Okay, none of my business. That's their relationship dynamic. Meanwhile, Joey is going to the group and saying, I don't know, I don't trust it, I don't, mm -mm. So they decide to go out and experience New York. They're gonna go see the city. And I'm like, you know what? That's a great idea because New York City Pride is supposed to be lit. You know, it's a lot of historical queer content down there. So, queer content. A lot of historical queer sites. So they went to go see Langston Hughes Brownstone, the poet, the writer. And they got a random trade off the street to take a picture for them. And you know how trades do when they look and they grab their piece. So he grabs his piece and Joey went, ooh, girl, my booty hole quivered, showing that Joey is not getting any play. And they re-emphasized this when Joey, Langston, and Ryan went to a bar. Meanwhile, Sebastian and Magnus went back to the house. So we're gonna take a split in the group story. Joey and Langston and Kyle are at the bar and first things first, Kyle finds trade. Kyle finds trade and he starts fucking him in the bathroom. And Joey, <laughs> Joey's like me, she's like, I don't understand how he pulls all the trade all the time. And Langston said, you do realize he has a six pack, he has pecs, and he's like really handsome in the face. And Joey said, girl, I can spit down the street and hit somebody with abs. Muscles are not everything. And I agree, it's just like a lot of black and brown gay people, a lot of gay people in general, a lot of people in society are very physically focused. So if they see muscles, they just lose their train of thought. And that's personally not me. Nico, you're ripped. I actually don't date people with muscles. <laughs> I usually don't date people with muscles because not every muscle gay and or person that's really into fitness has my mindset. Because yeah, I'm into fitness, but I'm a big dweeb. So that's really my kind of environment. But moving on, they're having this conversation and Langston is like, oh, well, I have the same problem. I, I don't know why, but I, I can't pull women, you know? I don't have game. And they're both talking about how they don't have game. So the lesbian bartender is introduced and she's like, oh, well, why don't you hit on me? And suddenly Langston is pussy. And the bartender read her to filth and said, you're just some hootie tooty academic girl that doesn't know how to get pussy. And it's true. And it's true. And Langston had to sit back and think about it. So now we're shifting scenes back to Sebastian and Magnus. 
I know, I know, shell shock. I'm trying to keep it as coherent as possible. So Magnus and Sebastian are talking and Sebastian's like, oh, you don't understand Magnus. I like Kyle. And he's like, yeah, Sebastian, I know you've liked Kyle since sophomore year. And he's like, no, but you don't understand. We've been talking a lot recently. And this is the hopeless romantic gay <laughs> that's getting representation within this movie because he begins to describe things as we talk a lot because we text, we talk on the phone, we Skype. And in my head as an adult, I'm like, that's what I do with my friends. Like, I mean, I do that with the person that I'm dating as well, but that's what I do with my friends. That's not a romantically exclusive activity kind of thing, you know? Especially because he never emphasized that they were flirting, just that they're communicating a lot. And Magnus is like, okay, but you know that Kyle's a whore, right? And I say whore not to shame him, but to say, the man does not like commitment. He fucks around and Sebastian, sweet baby Sebastian. He sat down and said, you don't understand, Magnus. I don't need to change him. I don't want to change him because I'm going to give him my special gift. And Magnus is like, what the fuck are you talking about? He's like, I'm going to give him my bugina. I'm going to give him my virginity. And Magnus is like, you, you went on a trip to Paris and you ain't get no dick. And he was like, no, I'm not that kind of girl. Plus, you don't understand. Once I give him my special gift, he's gonna be hooked. It's gonna change him. He's gonna be with me. And Magnus is looking at him like he's stupid. And I was looking at him like he's stupid because if everybody knows that Kyle hates commitment, you giving him your virginity and waiting for him to make a move on you is not gonna secure a relationship with him. That's like, that is a virgin's thought process. <laughs> when I was like 19 and a virgin, I would think the same thing. So I'm not gonna like fully front him, but it's just like very naive to an actual adult who has had sex and who has had multiple relationships. It's just like, oh baby, you're in for a rude awakening. But after that, they all meet back up and then they start to talk about dating sites. Because Kyle, the sex loving man that he is, is always on the apps. <laughs> well, back then it was sites because apps weren't a thing. So he was always on the sites and they were like, why do you go on to these sex sites? And he's like, you don't understand. It's not all about sex. And Joey pointed out that why are there so many dicks and asses out in these pictures? And that's what I'm talking about. It's like, yeah, apps and sites were originally made for a different purpose, but as of now, it's devolved to a sex place. Like if you're still on apps and on sites, you've realized that it's more of a, at least specific sites and apps like Grindr, Jacked, Scruff, etc. You know what you're going on there for. So it's no need to like play, you know, feign ignorance because Kyle was just trying to save face because he's the one that regulars them. So Magnus interjected and said, well, it's not always about sex. I met Ryan on the site and everybody looked at him like he was crazy. And they're like, why would you be on this kind of thing? And I wanted y'all to realize that no matter how well put together someone may seem no matter how far they have their life planned up till marriage up till career up to housing kids they still have sexual urges unless they're asexual meaning that somebody who wants the picket fence who wants the wife and 2.5 kids could still want some dick <laughs> as we saw at the beginning of this movie where magnus was desperately throwing ass towards ryan and ryan's like we gotta wait this extra month so after he pleaded his case, he tried to clean it up with, well, when we got into a relationship, we both deleted our profile. So that was the end of it. And then he got a call from Ryan. So he exited the room. So they're talking, they're conversating with Magnus outside when they see Ryan's profile on the site. It's updated. It has face pictures. It has body pictures. It has dick pictures. And it says that his favorite hobbies are to bust down some nasty bottoms, to pass around to pass around bottoms with his boys and that he's having a sex party and he's sending out the invites to whoever asks. So at this point, they're all going, this can't be who we think it is because they met him like three hours ago. This can't be who we think it is. But girl, it was who they thought it was. So Sebastian, the sweet baby that he is, ran outside to tell Magnus, who just hung up the phone. And Magnus is like, no, this can't be right. This can't be right. It has to be like somebody catfishing as him. And Kyle said no, because he just invited my headless torso profile to the orgy. And Magnus said, you know what? We're gonna catch him in the act. We're gonna, we're all gonna go there and we're gonna go catch him. So, 
So they all pack up the things, they all pack up, they're all ready, they're all hyped to go and confront this man. And as soon as they get outside the door of the sex party, Magnus goes, I can't go in. I can't go in. Kyle, go inside and look for him. And if you see him, tell me so then I can go in. And in my mind, and in my mind, I'm like, why would you send Kyle, the one who is sex obsessed, who couldn't even go a whole bar trip without busting someone down in the restroom? Beyond me. Beyond me. I guess because everybody else was pussy to go into the sex party. But at that point, Kyle goes inside and he's getting checked out. He's checking people out because Kyle is a fine man. And then he meets Fat Daddy. Nico, yes, Fat Daddy. You know, one of my porn crushes, the ones I grew up on. Yes, that one. And my brain went blank for like 20 seconds. <laughs> my brain just went boop. And I kind of like forgot all sense of time because he was flirting with Fat Daddy. And Fat Daddy spoke in that song. He was like, so what's your name? And he said, dude. And he said, okay, dude, what's good then? And then they just started kissing. And Kyle put that towel and Fat Daddy just Fat Daddy out of the towel. And I was just like, I can't do this. I can't do this. I'm supposed to be doing professional commentary. <laughs> but anyways, I muscled through it. I regained my composure. And Kyle came out of that party 45 minutes later. <laughs> he came out of that party 45 minutes later and Langston smelled him and said, you said you were in there because you were waiting for him to get into the act, but bitch, you smell like booty cheek and nuts. So I don't know what's happening. So they're all a little ticked off at Kyle, but Kyle said, but I did see him in there. He's taking a shower break right now. So if you want to catch him, this will be the best time. So <laughs> Magnus says, all right, I'm going to go in there. And Kyle's goofy ass gonna go, I'm going to go hang with Magnus just to give him some emotional support. And everybody rolled their eyes because this nigga just going to get some more ass. So Kyle and Magnus goes back into the party. And Magnus at this point is hiding underneath the fucking bed because he heard Ryan's voice and he doesn't want to be seen. And he sat under that bed. He sat under that bed until he was done busting down multiple people. So at that point... <laughs> at that point, Nico, what happened to Kyle? Oh, Kyle, as soon as they walked into the building, Kyle said, you got this? And Magnus was like, yeah, I got this, don't worry. And Kyle, Kyle vanished. He went to get some more booty. So at that point, Magnus comes out of the party alone because Kyle is still hunching. And he confronts Ryan and he says, I not only heard you, but I saw you. And that's the thing. Ryan began to try to play with his intelligence and gaslight him by saying, my friend was throwing a party. I've never been to one. I was just curious. I came to drop off some. And Magnus cut him off and said, you came to drop off some dick. No, I was under the bed. I was in the room. And then he finally said, you know what, Magnus? Fuck you. If that's what you want, we done. And I'm just sitting here like, how can you make Magnus out to be the villain when you were just fucking somebody raw and had him on a six month wait list for sex. And I don't wanna give too many spoilers because I want you to guys to actually go watch this movie because this was just the first 20 minutes. So I don't wanna give too many spoilers, but Ryan in the end justified it by saying, I've had a hard life. I've had a hard past. You don't understand, you don't get it. I've been through a lot and that's why I fear intimacy and that's why I fear commitment. And I wanna say fuck you to anybody who thinks that way because you do not toy with somebody like that, especially for five months. Not giving them intimacy, not giving them sex, but you're raw dogging everybody and their brother across the city. Like that, it, it doesn't it doesn't make sense to me. And I understand a lot of people have emotional trauma. A lot of people can't actually connect through intimacy because of their trauma. But to use that as the excuse as to why you're rampantly cheating on him, because it it went further than just the sex party. It went further than just hooking up while they were in a relationship. Because later in the movie, it's revealed that Ryan was fucking people in Magnus's apartment and making porn vids and putting them online and saying, oh, busting down this nigga while my boyfriend's out. That kind of thing. So, I mean, it, it really goes there. This movie really goes there and shows you that some people will try to justify their actions based solely on their past when that should not factor in. When that should not be a, a, a conversation when I just caught you at a sex party busting down multiple people. So they storm off and Kyle finally walks out and he's like, hey, can we go? 
the party has reached its peak. Did you see the busted niggas that just walked in there? So then Madness rolls his eyes and they all storm off. And that's where I left off in the movie. Mind you, this is the first 20 minutes of the movie. And that was only one dynamic relationship wise. So if this seems interesting to you, I would definitely check it out. Especially because like I said, The Skinny is one of those movies where you can find it on multiple streaming apps for free because I just used the Fire Stick and I typed in The Skinny and it gave me two apps where they're showing the movie for free just with ads. So definitely check it out. <laughs> it's messy. It's messy and I like it because it shows you an accurate representation of multiple gay archetypes interacting in a realistic way yeah the writing at the beginning is a little cringy but it gets really good and the acting is really good sadly i didn't see a lot of these people in other projects after this but it was a really nice project so i would definitely recommend sitting down taking the time to watch it but at around 25 minutes i think that's a long enough video i'll talk to you guys later and once again, a quick thank you to all my patrons on Patreon and a quick shout out to my third eye tier patrons. Your support means everything to me and helps me do this a lot more smoothly. I will also be listing this week's live stream topic in case anybody wants to join in on the fun. I'll see you guys there.